the next topic students the next topic is typical issues to consult on what issues we will consult with the employers in employee introduction of new measures affecting health and safety the new measures which affecting health and safety of the worker we need to consult with the worker <coughs> appointment of new advisors if we will appoint new advisor we need to consult with the other uh, persons with the uh, advisors we need to consult with each other the employer need to consult with each other because he need a feedback from him health and safety training plans if we need to prepare health and safety training plan for the company so we need to consult that plan with the employer uh, with the worker sorry with the supervisor in the organization we need to consult with each other <coughs> introduction of new technology if there is any new technology that that is coming to our company we need to consult about that technology with the workers with the employees why because we need to understand that what is hazards in that technology and we need to understand the technical knowledge of the workers about that technology so these are the issues we need to consult with employees so methods of consultation one is the direct consultation and the other one is to worker representative direct consultation implies talk to each workers in his own issues in direct consultation the employee will talk to each workers and what their issues are their problems the employer will solve that but this can be happen in a small companies but in a long but in a large company this not be possible so how we will consult with the workers in a large companies through workers representatives how we will prep, we will make committee committee is formed to represent workers in the committee there will be different people there will be representative from the workers and there will be a sitting chairperson in the committee there will be other people from technical technical department from the hc department from the other departments but in this committee the top management will be present like project managers or other top management general manager he need to attend this committee meeting and this committee meeting should have the authority and the meeting of this committee will be regular and what will be discussed in this committee that should be resolved that should be solved the problem should be should be solved members may have rights in law the member of this committee they have rights in law okay there what there discuss in the committee that should be solved so health and safety committee or forum what makes an effective committee how the, this committee this safety committee will be effective effective committees will depend on who is on the committee the person who will be present in the committee who is that person so that person should be a thirty full persons and should be from middle management and should be from workers how often the committee meets the meetings of the committee regular meeting of the committee once in a month who will be act as chairperson for this committee always the top management the project manager or the md or the gm general manager he should act as chairperson then that committee will have authority 
for the other persons. What authority the committee will have? What will be discussed in this committee? What safety issues discussed in this committee? How the discussion will be recorded? <clears throat> there should be minutes of meeting, minutes of meeting, and there should be a proper recorded system, whether that is on computer or other, and that record should be dispatched, should be conveyed to other persons, to all concerns persons, how issues will be followed up. The issues which discussed in this committee meeting, how these issues will be solved. Then <clears throat> issues that may be considered, what issues will be considered in this safety committee meeting? Study of accident and accident statistics. The first thing which will be considered in this committee meeting, we will consider the accidents and disease statistics. The previous accidents and disease statistics we will consider. We will discuss about that. Then review of reports from active monitoring. From inspection, active monitoring, what inspection, safety tour, <clears throat> safety sampling, management walkthroughs, health and safety uh, inspections, or other inspection. We need to review that reports in this meeting. Then examination of safety audits reports. We will examine the safety audit reports. Consideration of reports and information from HEC. The HEC reports we need to consider in this meeting. Consideration of reports submitted by safety representatives. Safety representatives, which the represent, safety representatives are those which is nominated for that projects. So the reports should be considered in this meeting, which is submitted by the safety representative. Provide assistance in development of procedures and policies. When we developing the procedures and policies, so that should also be considered in this meeting. Monitor the effectiveness of training. The all people should talk about the training, the effectiveness, the training effectiveness, that whether the training that is given to the worker that is effective or not. If not effective, why not? What problem? The trainer is not good, or the mediums, uh, or the uh, communicated medium is not good, or what, what flaws? How we will improve the training for health and safety? How we will improve the job training? Monitor and improve safety communications. We already studied the communications, the verbal communications, the written communications, the uh, graphic communications. So how we will improve in our company? Because this graphic communication is also very important, the signages. How we will put the uh, good signages in a prominent places? We, and how we will improve the written communication, the verbal communication, how we will convey our health and safety messages to workers in a verbal communications. So how we will improve? So these are the issues that should be considered in this safety committee meeting. The next topic is the training. HNS training is the planned formal process of acquiring and practicing knowledge and skills that is relatively safe in a safe environment. So due to training, we can change the behavior we can change the procedures, the, the way of doing the work. And this a plan system. The training is a plan system. In a training, we can deliver the knowledge and skills about the working process, that how the work will do the work in a set manner. Training has a dramatic effect on safety-related behavior. Due to training, the behavior of the worker will be changed. Without training, workers try to do their job by copying 
others doing the job the way they think is best if the worker is not trained he then what he will do he will see to the other person or he will copy the other person that how he is doing the work in that way he will do the work if the other person is doing the work in a set manner so this person who is copying the other person he will also will be an unsafe and doing the job the way they think is best or the person if he has no training so he will do the job in that way that he is thinking that is best for me if that way is unsafe so he will do the work in an unsafe manner so the training is very important for the workers in a company without training they cannot do the work in a safe manner so we need to give quality training to the workers in our companies this very important part of health and safety management system the worker should be properly trained if the worker is coming to your company so from entering the gate that person should be trained about the whole organization about the rules and regulations of the company and about to his job how to do his job in a safe manner otherwise he will do the work in a unsafe manner and there will be accidents so what happen in the accidents maybe the person will injure or maybe the person will expire and the company will lost their money their financials money morally their responsibles and maybe there will be a legal action so therefore the worker should be trained in a proper in a quality in a good manner okay it's very important and this is a very important health and safety elements the training when you are working as a hcc professional or hcc specialist nobody you need nobody should be permitted without training in the company okay so training helps worker to understand hazards and risks the person the workers will understand about the hazards and risks of the organization or of the company and he will also understand the hazard and risk in his job because in the training you will tell to the workers about the hazards in the risk that is available in his job and the worker will also understand about the rules and precautions of the site rules of the sites the precautions for the work the precautions for unsafe conditions for unsafe activities and he will also understand the worker the people will also understand about the emergency procedure if you will give him a correct training educate training they will be understand the emergency procedure maybe uh, because uh, in any company there may be a fire emergency maybe other emergency for example oil and gas hydrogen sulfide or h2s gas that's a common emergency so you need to train them if there is any emergency so how they will escape themselves how what will be the procedure what will be the method to go to assembly points so in emergency procedures we will study this in later in detail and training you will tell to the workers or the other people who to contact with concerns if there is anything so to whom they will consult for example for first aid or for first aid who who is the person the worker to contact with him the concerns people numbers for example if there is any other emergency so to whom they will the, the worker will uh, contact limitation and restrictions they will also the worker will also understand the 
limitations in the section, the rules and regulations, the procedures, the, the other things that is not allowed. For example, in a company, they, they will tell during the training that alcohol or other things due to which the working conditions of the person is affected that is not allowed in the project. Personal safety responsibility, the people will all also understand, the worker will also understand their responsibility for health and safety. Consequences are breaking rules, including disciplinary procedures. So they will also understand the procedures of the discipline, how they will follow the rules. <clears throat> if they will break or breach the rule, so what will be the result? They will also understand. So in during training, you will tell to them in, in the warning, if, if they will break the rule, there will be a warning letter, there will be verbal warning, there, then written warning. The last one, maybe the person will be out from the company. Training opportunities, induction trainings, new employees, job change, new hazards following a change in job. If the job will change, we need to give him the training. We need to give the workers about the training about the job. Process change, new hazards set it with new ways of working. If the process turned, we need to tell the workers about that process. New technology, new hazards set it with plant and machinery. We also tell to the workers about the new technology and the hazards that's available with the new technology. We also need to train all the workers for that new technology. New legislation, implication of new legislation. If there is any new rules and regulations or new legislation in the country, we need to convey message. <clears throat> we need to tell the worker about that new legislation. <clears throat> then induction training, very important. Because induction training for all the workers or for all the people who will enter in the company before entering, before going to the work, work the person should be inducted. The person should be trained. The person should be trained. The first training that is induction training. Okay, so what will be, what topics will be covered in an induction training? <clears throat> health and safety policy. We will tell to the workers about the health and safety policy during the induction training. Then <clears throat> emergency pr procedures, we will tell to them about the emergency procedures, first aid, specific site hazards and control. Later we will study these things, okay, in detail in these elements. Welfare facilities, safe moments of vehicles, accidents, and incident reporting that how they will report the accident or incidents, we will tell the workers in this training, in this induction training. Consultation arrangements, how they will consult with the authority people, with the managers, with the engineers, with the supervisors. Then safety rules of the site, personal protective equipment, safe working and permit, to system risk assessment responsibilities of individual for health and safety and disciplinary procedures of the organization. We will tell all these topics to the workers, to the new workers, to the new people who are entering to, in the organization. We should to induct them. We should to give induction training and these topics should be given to that person. So, Dear students, today we studied 3.1 and 3.2. Inshallah, tomorrow we will study human factors which influence safety related behavior. Okay? So now the door is open for question answer. Okay? So you can
question from me, anything. So I will answer to you. 